Greetings, respected viewers. I'm George from Ireland. I'm on Gower Street in London. Behind me, you can see number seven, Gower Street. And it was in this building, the house of uh, Sir John Everett Millet's parents, that in um, 1848, the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood was founded. And it had four founding principles in the, the, the document that they signed. Now, I can't tell them to you off by heart, but uh, it's roughly about this. As in, in their art, they would be um, giving voice to things that were soulful. They would be avoiding things that were just uh, about imitating other artists, um, the, the, the styles that have been learned off by heart. They would pay very close attention to flora and fauna and try and depict those uh, in all their minutiae. Goodness, and what's the last one? Probably forgot, forgot about it. Yeah, the art had to be something more than just um, showing an image. It had to convey a more profound message. I've not necessarily got them in the right order. So there are a number of, of um, artists who are officially part of the Free Raphaelite Brotherhood, as in signed up to these overarching principles of the artistic movement. Um, obviously, John Everett Millet, William Holman Hunt, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, and his brother, William Rossetti. Um, a, a few others, William Morris, and, and, and who Edward Byrne Jones, um, John William Waterhouse, there was a woman, I don't remember her name, the muse of certainly of uh, Dante Gabriel Rossetti and William Morris was Jane Burden, who obviously married William Morris, later Jane Morris. Um, now, to some extent, you could have said, uh, who's the guy who comes before Morris? John Ruskin, he's a bit older, but uh, he's the one who married Effie Gray, and horrified on the, on the bridal night that uh, she actually had pubic hair. Um, so revolted by that because in, in, in uh, the art they had, sort of show, showing ancient Greek statutory, they didn't show female uh, pubes so, um, when they showed female nudes. So then he, uh, he never did the business with her. And as he didn't do his duties, well, the, the marriage was never consummated. It was, it was a null and then she married somebody else. So obviously they're mainly a, uh, a movement about the visual arts, but to some extent literature as well. Some of them were um, poets as well, and often their, um, their uh, artwork was depicting, was illustrating poems, biblical scenes, uh, and so forth. So why are they called pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood? They want to go back to the, to the 14th century, really. They said that Raphael came along and spoiled things. They didn't like the way Michelangelo had uh, led Western art. They felt that there was the overweening influence of Sir Joshua Reynolds um, in British art, who was the, the doyen of British artists for a long time. I think he was president of the Royal Academy as well. He's he's, he's, he's statues in their forecourt. So um, they were rebels within the art movement. I'm not sure what, what in more modern times, what was equivalent to them, perhaps YBA, young British artists in the, in the 1990s, but I don't know, know a great deal about art. So um, the paintings were fairly naturalistic. They hoped not to stylized. Um, and so they were obviously quite, quite a major movement for the next 40 years after their foundation. So then Impressionists came along, but Impressionists are mainly French and Dutch. Um, so the PRB didn't spread much along, uh, be it further than here. Now, um, say Alfred Lord Tennyson was a poet whom they greatly admired. Um, he was never officially part of them. So you can see that there's a, there's a crossover between um, the plastic arts and uh, literature. And William Morris in particular uh, was a poet, a novelist, an essayist, a pamphleteer, and not just someone who painted, I know he produced furniture, um, and uh, he was a printmaker too. So that's the PRB, so very close uh, to, to the heart of London. Now, we're not too far from Bloomsbury Square, Bedford Square, um, um, anyway, Gower Street, very close to University College London, Godless Gower Street, as they used, to, as they called it. And so they influenced a number of art schools. And having been seen as insurgents within art, they became something of the establishment. So, on the knighted Millet, for example, they were part of this cult of, of the Middle Ages, looking back very sentimentally to the Middle Ages, eulogising about it, about days of old when knights were bold and chivalric values, most of which was bunkum. Uh, the reality was about as far as the idyll as can be imagined in many cases, and uh, painting those sort of scenes, well, Mort to Arthur by Alfred Lord Tennyson. And you can see um, uh, PRB uh, um, uh, murals of that at the Oxford Union, in the Oxford Union Library. Um, anyth anything Arthurian was at the height of fashion then. It's partly a reaction against 
the industrial revolution, the transport revolution, urbanization to simpler values. Um, part of the arts and crafts movement wanted handmade furniture, things lovingly uh, created, not mass produced, uh, which they felt was impersonal and hideous. They all, above all, want to produce quality art, not to make it as popular as possible, not to make a fat, a fat profit necessarily. If you made money, that was all right, but that shouldn't be your primary motive. It must be to produce art of the highest possible quality. Anyway, that is uh, just a very brief introduction to the, what the PRB were about, and they often signed their paintings pre-PRB. There was even a woman who was considered part of them, which was highly unusual in those days. Toodaloo!